Hi, are you a product developer, an inventor, uh, or just a creative person perhaps? You have lots of ideas and you'd love to bring some of these to market, but you just have no idea even where to start. Uh, it's keeping you stuck. Or maybe you've got questions, you've, you've moved yourself forward a little bit, but you've got questions that are keeping you stuck at a particular point. Well, stick with me here and I'm going to answer some of these questions that I often get from our InventRight clientele when I'm doing product evaluation calls. <music> Hi, I'm InventRight head coach Terry Amara, and I've been coaching inventors uh, in the licensing process for over nine years. And in my experience, many inventors or creatives have some great ideas that they're not even trying to bring to market. Um, they're not trying licensing and they're not trying venturing, and it's it's usually because they did some initial research and they came away with so many questions and so much misunderstanding about the process that they were just frustrated or overwhelmed by uh, the process and they simply decided to give up right there on the spot. Well, you know, it really is a shame when uh, people give up on their product before they even get started with it. Um, because by simply getting their questions answered, they can have the types of insights that provide them with the clarity, the confidence, and the motivation necessary to really take some action. By getting these questions answered, they can start taking some simple steps towards bringing their product idea to market, um, and in so doing, potentially um, providing consumers with a great solution that isn't there currently, um, and beyond that, earning some additional income and maybe fulfilling a personal dream uh, or aspiration, um, and that truly would be a win-win. So what are some of these questions that uh, inventors have uh, that might keep them stuck in the mud or uh, frozen with uh, uncertainty? Well, they could be things as simple as, is this a good idea? Um, that's a pretty popular one. Um, it could be, uh, is this an easy industry to invent in and to get into? Um, maybe it's, um, do I need a prototype? Um, or is this prototype uh, sufficient? Um, it could be, uh, um, is this marketing material uh, any good uh, that I have? Um, maybe it is, is this product even licensable? Um, that's one that I hear quite often. And there are a host of other questions too. So what I want to quickly point out is that we all, of course, have different experiences and different skill sets. And what that means is that we're, even on the same subject matter, we're all likely going to have different types of questions that we want to get answered. Um, and on an educational video such as this, I can't possibly um, effectively answer all of those different questions um, that may lead you to frustration or anxiety. Um, but with that, um, I'm going to do my best. Okay, so uh, let's quickly tackle the questions that I tend to get asked most often. Uh, and they're really uh, two sides to the same coin, in my opinion. That is, is this a good, uh, good product idea? And is this product idea licensable? Um, well, because I likely have not studied your marketplace recently, um, my answers are only going to be as good as the information that you provide to me. So that comes back to, um, have you studied your marketplace? Um, and if so, um, have you found any other products uh, out there like it? And if in fact you have, then what is your strong point of difference? What makes your product different than those other things? Of course, uh, we want to know, uh, what do people think of those existing products? Do they like those existing products? What do they like about those existing products? And what do they dislike about those existing products? Studying the marketplace is is tremendously important, okay? But the general answer um, that I would tend to provide in this situation is if you do have a product in a field where there, uh, there are a lot of similar products um, to or, or products that are similar in the respect that they're trying to solve the same type of a problem, um, number one, that's a good thing. That says that there's big market demand, right? Um, so I like that aspect of it. Um, if that's the case, you need to have a really strong point of difference. You need something that is going to help your product stand out above the rest. Um, so, so that's an important aspect of it. 
Um, and if in fact you do have a, a product that has a strong point of difference, um, is it manufacturable? And is it manufacturable at a price that is reasonable and makes sense for that marketplace. So it falls somewhere in the middle, um, or if it's a low-end solution, maybe it's less expensive, or if it's a high-end solution, it's higher in price, but not significantly higher in price. Um, so those are some of the things that I would consider before uh, coming back to you with an answer is, to, is this a good idea or and is it licensable, okay? So what's another question that I often get asked on product evaluation calls? Uh, well, that would be, uh, um, is this an easy industry to license into or an easy market to license into? And what I would tell you is um, it, it's nice to know that because we want to have an idea before we set our foot on this path. We go down that road, kind of what we're getting into. Um, and the, the answer is not totally straightforward. There's a lot of, um, a lot of things to consider. And one of those things that I would consider is, is this an industry where they're used to receiving outside product submissions? Uh, something like the toy and game industry um, or uh, housewares, kitchenwares industries where they're used to receiving outside product submissions. Um, well, if that's the case, then I would say, yeah, it's not necessarily an easy uh, path because there's going to be a lot of competition, but certainly um, there's going to be some advantages to uh, licensing in that space. Now, the flip side of that would be, um, what if it is something like, um, uh, like the apparel industry? or you've got a product for an improvement in the oil and gas industry, um, or in shipping, or in uh, you've got a phone app. Um, these are categories where they're not necessarily used to receiving outside product submissions, so they don't have the processes in place and that can make things um, a bit more uh, difficult for you in trying to get into the companies, number one, and then you might have to explain to them what you're trying to do and what licensing is about, so that can make it a little more challenging as well. Doesn't mean it can't be done, uh, it just means that, uh, that it could be a bit more challenging going in. And you just wanna know that, right? You just wanna be aware of that up front. So here's some other considerations. Um, beyond, um, is it a marketplace where the companies are used to receiving outside ideas? Um, it might be, um, are there, uh, are there trademarks and, uh, and patents that are necessary in this space where IP is really important to them? Um, is there uh, regulatory hurdles that need to be overcome? Um, regulations that you're going to have to go through testing and things of that nature in order to get your product onto the market. Um, well, that can make things a bit more challenging too, uh, right? So those are some of the other considerations that you'd want to have uh, prior, to, uh, prior to knowing, is this an easy marketplace to jump into? Another very common question is, do I need a prototype? And the simple answer to this is yes, you need a prototype. Now, uh, just because I say yes, you need a prototype, you need a prototype because you want to be able to convey just what your product is and the benefits of it. But the real question is, what type of a prototype do I need? Okay, so different types of prototypes provide different benefits are needed for different reasons. So if you were to ask me, do I need a production uh, ready prototype? I would likely say no. There are certain situations where maybe that's the case, um, but it's not typical. If you were to ask me if I need a, uh, a, a physical prototype, I might say, uh, yeah, it depends a little bit on what you're trying to do. Um, are you going to be making a video uh, to show how your product works? Um, do you need to have a physical prototype in order to test whether your product actually does function the way you think it's going to? Um, well, if that's the case, then yeah, you probably need a physical prototype, but that can be done in a number of different ways. You can do what we call Frankensteining, piecing different uh, the types of products together, taking pieces off and piecing them back together, um, kind of like Frankenstein, uh, to make it work. Um, but oftentimes you really only need a virtual prototype, something that is a 3D rendering of your product to get the finished look of your product across on your sell sheet and you can let your marketing copy really do the talking and do the selling um, of the benefits for you. Um, but it really does depend on, uh, on the product and the marketplace uh, and my answers are likely going to be as nuanced as the spaces themselves. Beyond that, of course, there are various other methods. There's 3D printing. 
um, that might be available to create a, a nice prototype that you can you can test as well. Um, maybe it's that you're making your prototypes out of paper, like Stephen Key uh, did uh, at the beginning of his career. Um, maybe you're making things out of fabric. Um, it, you know, if it's a pet toy, as an example, um, or you're using uh, silicone and making silicone molds, or you're using uh, you're using um, moldable plastic or foam clay or a variety of other types of materials that are out there. So it really does depend on your budget, your skill set, your time, um, and the complexities of the market uh, in the companies that you're going to be pitching to. Um, so all those things need to be taken into consideration. Okay, one last question that I'm quickly going to touch on uh, that I often get asked is, is my marketing material okay? And I fully understand why people want to want to approach this on a product evaluation call. It's tremendously important. Um, you're going to be pitching this uh, product to companies and you have one chance to make a great impression and you certainly want to do that. So um, what I would tell you about this um, is that it's important to have compelling marketing material that is short and sweet. And that's pretty much what makes InventRight's approach to uh, marketing our products different. Um, most people that I see that, that come to product evaluation calls have put something together based on what they see in the marketplace for products that they're interested in. And often that is like a tri-fold brochure or, uh, or a two-page sell sheet. Um, uh, front and back, if you will. They're trying to give as much information as they possibly can. And we're taking a different approach than that. We want to get across the big benefit of our product, the primary benefits of our product, if there's additional benefits. Um, and we want to give the viewer of that sell sheet um, the ability to quickly make an evaluation. Is, is this a right fit for their, um, for their corporate strategy, for their product line, uh, and so forth. Um, but we don't want to overwhelm them with so much information because we want them to have to come to us for additional information about that product so that we can start forming a relationship because in the end this is all about relationships so getting that uh, getting that great marketing material together is tremendously important and i would tell you that it's it's the type of thing that typically needs to be worked on um, multiple times and ideally with somebody with a, a skilled eye uh, to, to look at that. So there's not a great uh, single answer I can give you there. Um, but hopefully this video has been tremendously helpful to you and it's giving you uh, some things to consider um, as you're going forward with your product. Um, and, if, uh, and if you feel like you need additional answers, more specific information, then please book a product evaluation call through InventRight. And uh, I or another terrific coach would be very happy to help you. Okay, thank you very much. If you liked this video, uh, please uh, please give it a thumbs up. Of course, subscribe to InventRight Television um, because inventors should be helping inventors. Thank you.